Have you ever heard of the term overview effect? Well, the term is the shift in cognitive awareness that astronauts experience when they actually leave Earth. It's the sensation of uh, first-handedly see Earth from other space and actually capturing the fragile reality of Earth, which from space looks like a blue marble hanging in the void. Of course, when you see these kind of things, you realize that national boundaries vanishes and conflicts that divide people disappear. Therefore, it's important for us and it's imperative for us as a species to come together, join our effort and actually use this incredible resource, which is space. Clearly, it's not for everyone. Uh, only 600 lucky few have actually been above the karma line. To all of us earthlings, let's say, the only way to picture and relate to this sensation is imagining the first time we were on a plane. Think about the first time you were gazing through the window of a plane and looking earth from up above. You see the difference between that view and the view of earth from the car windows. The kind of cognitive shift is exactly what astronauts experience, of course, exponential times. Today, we are on the verge of the new space race. This new space race is democratizing space. It's making space more affordable and accessible, of course, to space agencies, to industries, and to every one of us. We can say that what, what was once the realm of space agencies and public entities is today open for business. In my six year experience as consultant in the space industry, I was lucky enough to actually witness this new uh, space race which is starting. And um, I was fortunate enough to take part of this uh, great new adventure. Today, we are living in a new era in which space and Earth are much more intertwined. They leave a very symbiotic relationship between them. And today, uh, we've heard in this MBA, everyone says that data is the new oil. I agree on that. But they will also reinforce this concept by saying that if data is the new oil, space is the largest oil field humankind can ever tap into. Of course, we know space is pretty far away. So to get there, we actually have to build our own celestial vessels. And these are powerful rockets. Clearly, not everyone can build a powerful rockets, but imagine that. Only in the last two years, 4.2 billions of venture capital money has been poured into the launch industry, making the launch industry actually skyrocket. And just as a reference, this 4.2 billion of private capital is more than all the private capital ever invested in the industry since it started in the 60s, just to give you this reference point. Clearly, this race is led by visionary billionaires, people like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, which are trying to lower down the cost of access to space from the 400 million of a launch of a space shuttle down to the 60 million of the launch of a SpaceX, SpaceX Falcon 9. But don't think that only they can do that. Space is now open for everyone. Just over a month ago, a team of students, actually engineering students from the University of Southern California a Rocket Propulsion Lab, jumped on their pickup truck, loaded their rocket, 4 meter rocket, and drive onto a dirt road towards the New Mexico spaceport. And at 7.30 a.m., Traveler 4, their rocket, successfully blasted off the launch pad and was one of the first amateur built rocket to actually reach space and go above the Karman line. So space is open for everyone. You say, clearly, once we are there in this oil field, how do we extract this oil? How do we get those data? Well, they may be too far out to see, but already today, over 2,000 satellites are orbiting on our heads. And these satellites are offloading on Earth, 
gigabytes and gigabytes of valuable data, which we are already using in everyday tasks that makes our lives better. Navigating through cities, making more accurate weather forecasts, building more safe and secure infrastructure. Nonetheless, thanks to technological advancement, miniaturization of technologies, the small commercial satellites is going to revolutionize again the industry. And in the next 10 years, over 7,000 new small satellites are going to be launched in space. If you make a comparison today, designing, developing, and building a satellite costs approximately as much as developing and launching a smartphone app. Therefore, there are lots of startups currently working on this. Over 300 startups have been working in the satellite industry and in the satellite services in the last five years, and they're still there, alive, and delivering services to their customers. Yes, but you say, what does the startup do? Well, there are some usage of these startups, there are some of the services of these startups which are easy to imagine. Farming, for example. There is the startup Astro Digital, which actually has achieved 20 million in funding. The startup is helping farmers through the images of the chlorophyll in the leaves and through the soil moisture data, temperature data, is helping farmers to improve the crop yields and in the same time safeguard the quality of the soil. But this is easy. But what about retail development? Orbital Insight, a startup which has accrued over 80 million funding, is currently helping Walmart and other hundreds of retailers in expanding their retail network through looking at the traffic in their parking lots in order to make them understand where to actually open new retailers. But moreover, Coca-Cola, as a company, has personally invested over 500 million capital into OneWeb, the startup led by visionary entrepreneur Greg Weiler, which is currently valued, by the way, $2 billion. And OneWeb, by delivering global satellite connectivity, is actually enabling Coca-Cola to manage all of the remote location that the company has on Earth, location to which previously access was impossible to actually reach. Space is not only about science, technology, and business. It's also about heart, humanities, and sometimes consumer goods. There are a few alternative songwriters which are actually using uh, the data coming from the Kepler telescope, currently targeting a collapsed supernova, to actually create music. But also more popular artists like Katy Perry has always used uh, space as a theme in their video, as you remember the video ET. And on the other way around, space cadets are actually becoming rock star. Buzz Aldrin, I think everyone knows who he is, he was one of the first men walking on the moon, is also being the only one and first astronaut to actually walk the New York Fashion Week catwalk, clearly with a space design collection. And there are also other companies like Glam Glow in US, which is a startup uh, delivering beauty products, which is developing their new products using meteorite powder, saying to be rich in minerals, at least what they say, uh, of course at a FT premium. So clearly space aesthetic and space culture has permeated humankind and society for the last 60 years, since the sci-fi silver panty suit that we saw a long time ago, to the uh, music themes which we remind in our heads, recollecting it from movies or TV shows. But now, with all this money pouring into the industry, clearly it's about business. The scenery has changed. It's not about the fight between two superpowers, as was in the 60s. It's about the collaborative effort of visionary billionaires, of venture capitalists, uh, of young driven entrepreneurs, all united by the strong will to progress humanity forward. So I would like to give you and leave you with this final message, I would say. Imagination is the only limit we're seeing today in this new 
environment and in this new industry. Therefore, it's time for business to look up at the sky. And I would ask you, what are you waiting for? Refine your idea. Build your business model. Get together your team of visionaries and go out there and try to enter this electrifying new industry and join this new space race. And uh, I personally would like to extend my personal wishes to the new breed of brave entrepreneurs who would actually help humanity move further. And um, to close and sum it up, as the Latin would say, through tough times to the star, per aspera ad astra. Thank you.